Hi guys, Rian here. Today I want to talk about Kujo Sara and what weapons and artifacts that you should use on her. In my previous video, I talked about her kit and did a side by side comparison with Burnett. If you have not checked out that video, I will link it above. In general, you will want to build Kujo Sara similar to how you build Burnett. You will need a weapon with high base attack to maximize the attack you will be transferring. This will also increase Kujo Sara's own damage. The second step that I would say is more important on Kujo Sara than on Burnett is energy recharge. Kujo Sara has an 80 energy cost when it comes to her burst. Typically, my rule of thumb is to have a minimum of 150% energy recharge on an 80 energy cost character. This can be either from your artifact timepiece or your weapon. After you have these two covered, you will want to balance your crit rate, crit damage and attack percent so she can function as a proper sub DPS. Kujo Sara actually has very decent skill multipliers and can deal a lot of damage if built properly. Let us start with her artifact sets. There are only two artifact sets that I would recommend. The first artifact set is the 4 piece Emblem of Severed Fate set. The Emblem of Severed Fate set works out perfectly with Kujo Sara as it gives her 20% energy recharge and also increases her elemental burst damage, which is a large portion of her damage. At talent level 8, Kujo Sara's elemental burst has 650% skill multiplier, which is really high. This is capable of nuking down enemies when done right. I will run an energy recharge timepiece, electro goblet and crit circlet with a high DPS weapon. But if you decide to use an energy recharge weapon, then you will want to go for attack percent timepiece, electro goblet and crit circlet. The reason why I don't recommend using attack percent goblet on Kujo Sara is because she already has attack percent ascension stat. Too much of one stat is never a good thing. The second artifact set that you can run is a 4 piece noblesse set. This will make Kujo Sara more of a buffer than a sub DPS. Similar to the emblem set, you will want to use a high base attack weapon with energy recharge timepiece, electro goblet and crit circlet. For the 4 piece noblesse set, it is even possible to use an energy recharge weapon with an energy recharge timepiece. This will push your ER to around 180% to 200%. The reason why I say this is because you will want to maintain the noblesse effect as much as possible. With the 4 piece noblesse build, you are essentially sacrificing her own damage to buff the entire team. Personally, this will be the artifact set that I'll be using because I plan to pair her with Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun is ready using the 4 piece Ambler Severed Fate set, and I do not have a spare artifact set. I'm pretty sure many of you will run into the same problem as me. Now that we have covered her artifacts, I'll be discussing about her weapon options. I was initially thinking of doing a weapon ranking for her, but there is really no point in calculating her damage because that is not her main goal. Kujo Sara is a character that needs to prioritize high base attack and energy recharge over dealing damage. This is why I decided to do a tier list instead of a DPS spreadsheet. Let us start with the new 5 star bow, Thundering Pulse. Thundering Pulse is a very good weapon for its stats. You get high base attack because it's a 5 star weapon and also 66% crit damage which is huge. It also has a passive that straight up buffs your attack percent. The Thundering Pulse is going to be able to give you the biggest damage numbers on your skill and burst as compared to any other bow. However, its passive is not really utilized to the fullest when it's on Kujo Sara. Since Kujo Sara doesn't really do normal attacks, the passive is completely wasted. With all this considered, I still think Thundering Pulse is going to be S tier. Next is Skyward Harp. The Skyward Harp has the highest base attack out of any bow in the game. This is going to give you the most attack bonus to your entire team and I can guarantee you, you are going to see a lot of Genshin speedrunners using the Skyward Harp for maximum damage buff. On top of that, the Skyward Harp also has crit rate on its main stat and crit damage as its passive. These are the two most coveted stats and is key for any DPS to deal a lot of damage. For all these reasons, I'm going to have to put Skyward Harp at S tier. Next, we move on to the Amos Bow. The Amos Bow is also a 5 star weapon and has similar base attack with the Thundering Pulse. It has attack percent as its main stat which is pretty nice. However, unlike the Thundering Pulse that has a 20% attack passive that benefits Kujo Sara, the Amos Bow doesn't. Although you will need to use a charge attack to trigger Tengu Jurai from her elemental skill, this doesn't increase the damage of it. Unless you have leveled up your normal attack talents which are the least important as a support, your charge attacks are going to be very weak. This also means the bonus charge attack from Amos Bow is quite pointless and for this reason, it is going to be in A tier. Then we move on to the fourth and final 5 star bow that we have, Allergy for the end. This weapon also has a high base attack of 608, similar to Thundering Pulse and Amos Bow, which automatically puts it above B tier. It also has a very important main stat of energy recharge, which is needed by Kujo Sara to consistently spam her burst. 
55% energy recharge is a lot and most weapons don't have such high energy recharge. The only drawback of this bow is its passive. As you all know, Allergy for the End is a support weapon that buffs your entire team with elemental mastery and even more bonus attack. However, Kujo Sara is unable to activate this buff consistently. Since Kujo Sara doesn't deal off field damage, she will need to combine her elemental skill and burst to activate this passive. Until we have really playtested her, it is really hard to tell if this passive will even activate at all or not. But even if it is possible, it's not going to be easy. All this considered, I'm still going to put Allergy for the end at S tier, but behind Skyward Hub. Now that we are done with the 5 star weapons, let's talk about the 4 stars. I'm going to start with the Windbloom Oat, the free 4 star weapon that we got from the Windbloom Festival. This weapon has a low base attack and it has elemental mastery as its main stat. Its passive increases her attack by 32% after using her elemental skill which isn't much and I rather prefer to have an attack percent main stat weapon than this. The Windbloom Oat is going to be in D tier. I wouldn't recommend using this weapon. Next we have the Ellie Hunter. The Ellie Hunter has the highest base attack out of all the 4 star bows which is really good for her attack buff. It also comes with attack percent main stat which is usable. But what makes the weapon good for Kujo Sara is its passive. The passive for Ellie Hunter is built for a sub DPS who only takes the few once in a while. With this weapon, Kujo Sara is able to build up 20% bonus damage at refinement 1 and 40% at refinement 5 while she is off field. And when she is on field, her elemental skill and burst will do significantly more damage. This is a very good sub DPS weapon for Kujo Sara and I'm going to put it at A tier behind Amos Bow. Then we have Stringless. Stringless is actually a fantastic weapon for any sub DPS, especially if you have high refinements. This weapon just hits like a truck. The issue with this weapon is Kujo Sara doesn't really benefit from the elemental mastery. For that, I'm going to put it at B tier. For the next category, I want to generalize all these bow because they are very similar. Prototype Crescent, Royal Bow, Hama Yumi, Rust, and the Predator all have one thing in common, and it's attack percent main stat. Personally, I have nothing against attack percent main stat weapons, but they aren't going to be the best on sub DPS who don't have above 2k attack. You don't get the kick in damage like crit rate or crit damage does. I'm going to put all these bows in C tier for Copium, because other than the attack percent main stat, nothing is going for them. Their base attack is between medium to low range. Their passive only works if you use normal or charge attacks which isn't part of Kujo Sara's kit. Perhaps you can make an exception for Prototype Crescent because if you hit the enemy's weak spot, your elemental skill will be able to benefit from the bonus attack. But this is only high C tier at best and I wouldn't even put it at B tier. Next we have the Sacrificial Bow and I think this is the best 4 star bow for Kujo Sara. It has the highest base attack out of any 4 star bow, similar to Ellie Hunter but also has energy recharge as its main stat. This is perfect for Kujo Sara's kit. Sacrificial Bow's passive also allows her to spam her elemental skill much more often for even more damage which is awesome. Every time her elemental skill strikes, it generates 3 electro particles which is good for Kujo Sara herself and the entire team. For this, I'm going to put Sacrificial Bow in A tier. I'm even going to say this is better than the Amos Bow. Then we have the Blackcliff War Bow. The Blackcliff War Bow is going to be a weapon very similar to the LA Hunter. It has the highest base attack of any 4 star bow and also has the very coveted main stat of crit damage. The only drawback of this bow is the difficulty for Kujo Sara to get any stacks. But even without its stacks, Blackcliff War Bow still gets B tier behind Ellie Hunter. Next up, we have the Mitternak Waltz and Compound Bow. Both of these have the lowest base attack of any 4 star bow and also has the useless physical bonus damage main stat for Kujo Sara. I'm going to put both of these weapons at D tier. After that, we have the Viridescent Hunt and I'm going to put this weapon at high C tier, above all the attack percent weapons. Viridescent Hunt is a decent weapon and has crit rate as its main stat. However, that is all it has to offer. This weapon is more suited for a main DPS and isn't really helpful for a sub DPS like Kujo Sara. Last but not least, we have the Favonius Warbow. Despite having very low base attack, the Favonius Warbow also has very high energy recharge of 61%. As you all know, energy recharge is an important step for Kujo Sara, especially if you plan to pair her with Emblem of Severed Fate set. The Favonius Bow also has a passive that generates energy for the entire team when it crits. This is perfect for a sub DPS and I would say this bow deserves to be in B tier. Well, this about sums up the weapon tier list and artifact choices for Kujo Sara. Let me know what you guys think about it. Also, let me know down in the comments how you guys are going to build your Kujo Sara when you pull her. I'm genuinely curious. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.